guys welcome back to another video so in today's video i want to share some interesting insights on the topic that is your apex test classes and loading test data so you have loaded test data via apex right but now in this video we would be exploring other ways of loading data so today we would be load data using your csv files right so in order to load data via csv files first we should remember that where we can have this csv file so in order to host this csv file in our salesforce systems what we have is we have only one option and that option is for your static resources right so in here also what we would be doing is we have this method so this video would be a theoretical part and the next video would be a practical demonstration because i don't want that this video should become too long and uh, so that we would be able to cover both the concepts and we would also be having certain questions that i would be discussing with you in this video and we would be uh, uh, telling about the solutions or we would be discussing about the solution approach of those uh, questions right so um, moving with this is we would use the test.load data method that is provided by default from salesforce in order to load the data from our csv file so what we would be doing is we would be having a csv file and we would be creating a static resource for it till now we are clear with this and this is very simple process if you are following my videos from a very long time right now what does this test.load data does is it takes two parameters first with it takes which os object uh, we are talking about and what is the static resource name so in here we have this example so our example says is we have list of s object it takes a s object param and here we are using test.load data we have account.s object type and we have the static resource okay this is your static resource so what we can uh, understand from here is that first thing whatever static resource we are making so uh, in this approach we have to make different static resource for this different s object type that is account contact right uh, lead uh, case or any custom object for that matter right so we need to have a particular data because how does it uh, salesforce know that what is the type of this data whether this data belongs to lead whether this belongs to contact or whether it belongs to account what right so what we are doing is we are specifying the s object type here we are specifying a ob uh, account if we had lead so we could have done lead s object type so in this way we are telling salesforce or we are telling our apex that this data is of the type account understood now what does this do is this test.load data it would return a list of s object that corresponds to each record that we have uh, inserted right and that is obviously that we need to have this static resource prior calling to this method else our uh, data would be failed and one thing more uh, the mime type for your uh, static resource could be any application uh, or ms excel format text or csv generally it's text or csv preferred you could have text or plain text also all right now let's see this example so we have this uh, csv and that has data for the test records and what is it is doing is it is having csv file for the three account records so what we have is we have so in comma separated how you would be able to understand is this your your column headers name website phone billing street billing city state postal code right so uh, corresponding to name we have this for website we have this right so in excel how it would it would have been so it would have been name website uh, phone so instead of in phone it's uh, name sorry it's salesforce test one website is something phone number is something something so this is how it is represented in csv now what they did is they created a static resource okay then we can move further so this is the main where we have to understand the thing so what we see here is this is a test class correct because we would be making use of this in our test classes only right and what we have done is we have used this and what we are getting is uh, we are getting the account 
a record based upon our static resource named test accounts here we are just verifying the size and what we are doing is we are getting the name of a1 and we are displaying this that is correct now my question arises here is that whether we can perform any dml operation here like we can uh, update this update this record or can we do some other sort of operations because why i am asking here is because uh, see what this thing is doing this thing helps us in uh, we could say uh, an alternative of alternative of your what at the rate test setup annotation right because what we generally do in test setup is we generally create let's suppose account records right we are creating account records with the required fields and then we are inserting those records right we are creating contact and we are inserting the contact records based upon the needs of our main apex class correct so what we could understand here is because uh, this would help us in uh, uh, modifying that method and also what could be here is like uh, this could be used in multiple instances we could load one file uh, with multiple uh, test coverage in that so in this what we can do is with this one uh, account uh, static resource we could have multiple class coverages because we could load this in class a or class one we could load this in class two and we could load this in n number of classes correct and we could uh, use this now and that is okay our first question that we asked was for dml that we would be understanding in the first uh, in the next coming videos right next what is the thing is we have to also think about your uh, governor limits or your storage limits right why i am saying because your static uh, resources also have a limit so if you are working uh, uh, as a salesforce developer as well as a consultant so it is your responsibility to note what is the existing uh, uh, what is the existing limit of your static resources because in most of the organizations static resource plays a very important role for storing images for storing css related files and other important things right so now you are just creating another static resource for your account object uh, and one more disadvantage that i could see in here was that uh, we have a particular apex class that is not including only accounts it could have accounts it could have contacts for now let's say it has leads and opportunities as well as some custom objects right so for all these we if we create particular particular set of static resources would that be uh, if you could say would that be worth it so that would be your question question to you because from my perspective like see you could have five files and those files could be very less less than one mb only right but then also uh, is it a perfect means yes or no that we would be understanding in the next video uh, till now i hope you got to understand about uh, one more important scenario uh, or because why i am saying this is most of the clients prefer this kind of things also so you need to take in mind that these these things are also possible with apex so i hope this was a brainstorming session let's meet in the next video